So we're now going to hear from Kate Kroll. Kate, many of you know Kate already because she works very closely with Redgate Gallery with Brian um, on a lot of projects, visual arts exchange projects with Australia. Um, she also has over 20 years of experience as a respected um, practitioner in the area of community cultural development and cultural planning. And she also does a lot of training and is a respected teacher in these areas as well. Um, so oh, welcome, Kate. Nice <laughs> Thank you. Yes, now I'll just get this started. Right. Um, I'm not talking to the slides. If you find what I'm talking about a little light on, then please um, look, at, look at the slides instead. <laughs> I believe that culture is the very essence of the human soul. I believe that culture encompasses our dreams, our aspirations, how we dress, what we eat, our rituals and our celebration. I think, I'm not sure you see, I believe about culture being the essence of the human soul, but I think cultural exchange is our attempt to assist others to understand and appreciate these aspects of our lives. As Hannah said, I work in CCD. Now, CCD, Community Cultural Development, many of you from Australia will be familiar with. Um, this is where you utilise the arts to address social issues. So a community that's going through great flux or change, for example, it may be that you help to mend that community's heart or you bring that community back together. One other aspect of CCD is that you bring people from disparate groups together. Am I waving across the screen? Right. One, one other aspect of my practice is that you bring people from very disparate groups in the community together to work towards a common goal. And this is a very important part of the work that I do. In recent years, I've brought my practice to cultural relations between China and Australia. And you can see examples of our work and the many projects that we've been involved in on the screen. Both countries, as we know, have rich histories diverse peoples, landscapes, cultures and customs. I am particularly fortunate in that I have had lifelong exposure to indigenous cultures and communities in Australia. But I wasn't so lucky when it came to China, that wasn't my birthright. And so, with my desire to engage in cultural exchange between China and Australia, I really needed to embark upon a period of self-education. I needed to build my understanding and appreciation of Chinese culture. Uh, to do this, I spent a number of years travelling solo thousands of kilometres across China and I've been to some extraordinary places and met some extraordinary people. And this helps to build my passion again. So I'm very fortunate. I love Australia and Australian culture and I love China and Chinese culture. So what would a girl do? Of course, my chosen profession, I work for myself. I invented my own company, Cultural Partnerships Australia, is for me to be able to take Chinese artists to Australia and bring Australian artists to China. Perfect solution for me. So, what I've done with this combined knowledge is I've, I've undertaken a series of projects. This one that we're looking at now on the screen was a particularly inter interesting project. It was called Hard Sleeper. I, in planning this project, I had to think about what, what aspects of Chinese and Australian culture have made a really deep impression on me. So then what, what aspects of Chinese culture do I want to share when I bring Australian artists to China? And what aspects of Chinese culture continue to puzzle or confuse me? For example, calligraphy. I, I struggle with calligraphy and I know that I struggle with calligraphy. I know how important it is to the Chinese but I don't get it. I try. I, I can't read it. I don't understand the nuances. I don't understand the different intensity of the stroke. Someone's written something beautiful, but they've written it in an angry way. You know? So there's all these layers I don't understand. So this informs the type of exchange that I embark on as well, because I want people to grapple with those issues as well. And how do we solve some of these confusions about Australia and Chinese culture? I realised that the most important thing for me in travelling to China was I needed contacts, I needed to meet people. I also needed content, I needed to learn stuff. 
I needed to be exposed to things, but I needed to know the context of why this is important and how it came about. I needed to understand the history more. And so all of my projects are based on providing the context, the content, and the context. So people can really be given the broadest range of experiences and the greatest opportunity for finding their space in China or Australia, or the person they click with, not the person I click with. Give them a range of options. The other thing that I think is most important in the projects that I run is the development of mutual trust and respect. This is particularly important in Aboriginal communities. I've written a number of um, training packages for artists who work in the Northern Territory, and I spent three months uh, talking to Aboriginal people between the Tiwi Islands and Catherine in the Northern Territory to find out what they wanted. I mean, we send people out there and they give people what we think they want, but people need to ask questions and lis listen very carefully to the answers when you're building these partnerships and relationships with people. Oh, yes. So, that one slipped through. This next project... <laughs> This next project, I bought 10 DJs and new media artists. It was called On the Edge, New Media and Hybrid Arts from Australia. And we toured, um, we did four big concerts in Beijing, a number of workshops, hand uh, hands-on projects. Then I put them all on the train to Chongqing. And so they had that experience of being in Chongqing and working with um, the Sichuan University and Organ House there. And then we caught the fast train over to Chengdu and they ran workshops and projects. So that's what you're looking at there. Um, so for me, this building of mutual respect and trust is really, really important. Aboriginal people, I learned, uh, think of, of people who come to their communities as the three M's. There's the missionaries. They come to teach us something. We need to give them this information. They don't have it. They're missionaries. There's the mercenaries, the people who come because they need to experience Aboriginal culture. And there's the misfits that don't really fit anywhere else. And every time I go into an Aboriginal community, I remember the three M's and I think, what am I here for? What am I doing? What am I trying to get out of this experience with this community? So all of those things in hand, what we need to do is looking at look at building relationships as well. So each of the projects that we've done are very interested in building relationships and long-term sustainable relationships between artists, between communities, both in Australia and China, individuals and corporate sponsors and businesses and galleries and drivers and hotels. So the two case studies are, very, very briefly, Hard Sleeper, which was the first one you looked at, which is we went to Pinya, Xi'an, Chengdu, Chongqing, Wuhan and Shanghai. The reason this project worked and was successful is because we managed to pick up a really important sponsor. So we picked up a, a sponsor that was Blue Scope Butler. Now Blue Scope Butler had been very involved in Chengdu after the earthquake. It's an Australian company based in Shanghai. They were building schools. We had artists. They wanted artists to go to the schools. They wanted Australian artists to go to the schools. We have now a long-term relationship with Blue Scope Butler because what we did with our exhibition, and Jeff would be aware of most of the exhibitions, is we, we try to arrange layers to each project. So at the exhibition, we asked two of the artists to paint on panels from the Shanghai Pavilion. So they were the big steel panels, and we auctioned those panels at the exhibition opening. And we raised not a great deal of money, but we raised a lot of money for the community, $17,000 that we raised. Um, I think it was Kerry Stokes' bid, actually, that came through on those paintings. And what we decided to do was divide that money between the school in Jingrang that, that we went to as the artists that you saw in the photographs and a school in the remote Northern Territory in Epinara. So this money has been handed over both to the school in Jingrang and to the school in Epinara and we have this beautiful drawing that we gave to the Aboriginal kids in Epinara from the kids in Jingrang that said, thank you, our friends in Australia. It was a, a big panda sitting there going, thank you, our friends in Australia. And this kangaroo with really pointy ears and a joey in its pouch with really pointy ears was saying, that's OK. And I thought that was the most beautiful expression of gratitude that we could receive. And as I said, this is the building the relationships. This relationship with Blue Scope has now been going on for two years. 
So it's really important. And it will continue to go on in that Stuart Deller from Blue Scott Butler said, this is the most important thing we've ever done. So I think that's important. The last um, project, which is this two generations you're looking at now, this was a really important project too. It was the 20th anniversary of Redgate Gallery and we took uh, 28 artists to Australia and we toured over nine months through Australian cities. Now, as part of this project, an important and large touring project in itself, it was important for us to put a layer on top of that. So I introduced an Australian-Chinese curatorial exchange because we had an exhibition and we could invite curators from China to come and help manage the projects. And so in a lot of these images, you're looking at uh, young Chinese curators who largely came from the cities that we visited during Imagine Australia. So we could go to them and say, we'd like to invite you back to Australia. This reciprocal relationship is almost impossible to fund. We were almost desperately looking for money in Australia because we don't fund Chinese artists to come to Australia. So it's really, really difficult. And so what we, what we were able to do in the end was develop a partnership with Rio Tinto. And Rio Tinto came to the party because they wanted this exhibition in Perth. And I knew that Rio Tinto have an Indigenous training program and they have an annual exhibition by Pilbara artists called Colours of Our Country. So if we were then able to take the Aboriginal artists and curators to Roeburn in the Pilbara and expose them to Indigenous culture so they had a better understanding, remember calligraphy and me? No idea. Chinese artists, I've, you know, I've had a dozen or so in Australia over the last 12, nine months, and they will look at Indigenous painting, and one was brave enough to say, it just looks like a kid did it. No, so mostly they just go, oh, well, you know, that's really, I don't get it. They don't say anything, but one said it just looks like a kid did it. So my aim then was to give them that, that contact, the content and the context by driving from Perth to Karatha, three and a half thousand kilometres, with a carload of Chinese curators and artists. It nearly killed me, and I only wanted to th throw one of them out the window. You know, if you spent 10 days in a car with your best friends, you will be grumpy. But we stayed in tents. They had never, in sleeping bags. We stayed on stations. We went to Aboriginal communities and we had the elders give them talks about the work. And then those last couple of photos you just saw, I don't know if I can go back to them. But the last one or two there, if I can get them, these couple, this was what happened. We had the Colours of Country exhibition in Perth and we had our Aboriginal artists going and being shown this Aboriginal work and saying, oh yeah, I went there. Oh, I've seen those flowers. I get that. And knowing that they had learnt an extraordinary amount in helping to understand our calligraphy, if you like. And then we were able to take the Aboriginal artists over to look at the exhibition of Chinese art. So this was the most brilliant exchange. Both sides benefited. It was absolutely wonderful. So that's, the, that's the two projects. Um, I had a number of questions I just wanted to pose, and it's something that I'd like you to think about so that perhaps we could um, talk about these a little later on, the, on this afternoon. And the first is, do we have a common understanding of what constitutes culture? I've made, I, you know what I think now, but do we have a common understanding of what constitutes culture? And what of cultural exchange? If the understanding of what culture is is a bit foggy, then our understanding of cultural exchange, when we're discussing something, maybe we're talking about different things. It's my experience, particularly um, with this last project, that the Chinese government's very hesitant for us to bring artists. They don't understand the person to person. In fact, in every state and every consul general where we took the exhibition to, they said, why are you bringing them here? What, who are they going to meet? So for me, you, you very clearly understand what my aim was, but how do I get that across? The importance of providing this context and content. What can we do together to assist in improving these sorts of programs? and building these sorts of programs so that they have lifelong impact upon the people who participate in them. And the last thing that I wanted to pose was, do we, as, as a group, uh, need to present our message more clearly to 
corp the corporates. You know, would, would, if we got together and presented our message more clearly, would that assist in breaking down the cultural resistance that we talked about earlier to sponsoring these sorts of projects? That's all. Thank you very much.